Hello everyone, thanks for looking at this video. If you're here, you probably have a problem with your Samsung dishwasher water wall 7E error code. This is a common problem and I got lots of help from other videos. There was a couple of things that I wanted to add on so I decided to uh, help you guys out. So uh, again, I made this video because other folks helped me with their videos and so I wanted to do the same for other folks. My Samsung water wall dishwasher is six years old, and I had the dreaded Samsung dishwasher 7E error. My symptoms were that it would run for about 10 to 15 minutes and then stop. The dishwasher would beep, and the diverter would be in the middle of the dishwasher. So after watching some videos, I took an educated guess and replaced the motor and the sensor. I know some folks uh, just replace the motor, and maybe that's a better thing or maybe not, but the motor and the sensor were, together were about the same price. After I put all this work in and put it, uh, unhooked it and put it back together and tried it out and it didn't work, a different error occurred. I couldn't believe it. Um, what happened was that the dishwasher would not even start up. It failed its pre-check where it would move back and forth and you'd hear the sound. Dut, 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 dut. And in my model year, this stops the dishwasher from even running. I've heard that in other years, the dishwasher will run but the bottom part will not function, resulting in uh, dirty, dirty bottom dishes. So this second problem was fixed by adding a magnet to the bottom of the diverter. The new sensor was for some reason not detecting the old magnet, so the home base couldn't be found, and it, the, um, it wouldn't know to go in the opposite direction. And we'll get into more details on that, but that's a summary of, of uh, where we are. Why I tried this. I've never installed a dishwasher before, so the things that uh, took me a really long time probably would take more experienced people a lot less time. This was an expensive dishwasher. I didn't want to take a bat to it, as others have done in some other videos, but at times I felt like taking a bat to it, so it a, can be a frustrating experience. But in the end, doing all this work saved me from buying a new dishwasher, and I did learn some interesting things. And now, <clears throat> the You'll, you'll, you'll be glad to hear you get to hear the joy of this lovely, lovely song that the Samsung dishwasher sings to you. I'm sure you probably thought it was annoying at first, but then after you spend hours and hours fixing your dishwasher and you finally go through a cycle and you hear the lovely song, it's awesome. So good luck on your journey fixing your dishwasher and, and hearing this lovely song. Uh, the time it took me was about uh, a little more than eight hours over a few nights. It was more work than you would expect. Uh, again, someone with more dishwasher experience could probably do it faster. But I wanted to kind of give you a, a rough estimate of how long it's going to take if you decide to tackle this project. So a summary of the steps that you have to do to replace this. First off, you have to uninstall your dishwasher. You have to pull it out to get to the back of it. So you have to fully uninstall it. You have to take out the parts that are inside the dishwasher. Uh, you put the dishwasher on its door to more easily gain access to the part that's being replaced. So it's at the very bottom of the dishwasher. So I found it easier to flip it on its uh, door to uh, be able to see what you're doing more easily. Uh, replace the part. Then you have to put it all back together. You have to reinstall the dishwasher. You test it out. And in my case, I had to install a magnet to fix a new issue, and we'll go into the details of that. And believe it or not, after all this work, um, I still had an issue. Well, this thing is not showing on my slide here. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, step number nine, let me just do this. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so after I put it all together and ran some test runs, it worked okay. But then I decided, then I went ahead and did it with, you know, some dirty dishes. And the dang thing didn't work. I'm like, what the heck? And then I really wanted to break out the baseball bat. But as it turns out, I had some dishes, uh, a strainer, that got the handle had gotten stuck and was blocking the diverter. And so we, we had uh, the dishwasher not running. So uh, fortunately, that was an easy fix. I wish the other fixes were easier, as easy as that one. Okay, here are the parts that I purchased. Um, I bought the uh, dishwasher nozzle cover uh, DD97-00216A. Here's what it looks like from the website where I purchased it on. Here's the old one. I just wanted to put that on there so that it shows you what it looks like. 
and the magnets that I bought. And I'll show you pictures of those those later. So the, I bought those two parts. This was motor and sensor was about 100 bucks, and the magnets were about $10. Uh, this is the old one. This is the motor. And a lot of people have just replaced that successfully. This is the sensor. And my logic was I didn't know whether it was the motor or the sensor, so uh, this whole part was about the same price as just the motor, so I went ahead and bought it. Now, that may have caused my other problem, but uh, I'm not sure. So here are the tools that you need if you want to take on this project. You need a flashlight to see what you're doing. Um, a lot of these things are under the cabinets, and it's hard to see, so you'll need a flashlight. A wrench for dis disconnecting the water source. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, sorry, Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, uh, a star screwdriver set because the front panel of the dishwasher uses a star screw just to make it difficult for novice people, I guess. Uh, some gloves to help you when you when you pull out the dishwasher. A hammer. Now keep that away from the dishwasher because you may want to grab it and just smash the dang thing um, at some point here. But uh, you will need it uh, a little later on just for some light, light tapping. But uh, try to keep it out of your immediate reach. Um, <clears throat> a metal tap tool thing, and I don't know what this is called, but it's uh, it's metal and it's has a round flat head, and it helps you remove a plastic part from the inside of the dishwasher. Um, I would also advise to take lots of pictures when you're doing this, so you can go back and look at them. It'll it'll come in handy. You'll think you remember things, what things look like, but then you won't. So <clears throat> take lots of pictures. So the first step is uninstalling the dishwasher. Um, a lot of you guys, you can skip over this if, you, if you've done this before, but this is for kind of the person who's never done it before. Uh, turn the water off. Unhook the drain, either from the disposal or from the air gap. This is going to be under your sink, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Unscrew the bottom plate of the dishwasher. These are star screws just to make it difficult. And this it's a little plastic plate, and you just take it off, and that gives you access to the water source and the power source. Um, make sure your power is off. You may have to unhook the power cord from the dishwasher. Uh, I did not. <clears throat> My power cord plugged into an AC outlet, and it was long enough that I didn't have to unhook it, and I had a switch on the outlet to be able to turn it off. But if you don't have a switch, make sure your power is off. <clears throat> Unscrew the water tube from the dishwasher. Use your wrench to do this. Unscrew the dishwasher from the cabinet that's holding it, which keeps it from tipping forward. This is on your cabinets. There'll be some screws in there that keep it from tipping forward. Now, my water cutoff did not fully close, so a little bit of water would come out of the hose. Um, you can take your water hose and run it to the sink if that's the case, if you have the, the same thing. You know, the, the cutoff is one of those old ones, and they don't sometimes fully close, and if you mess with them too much, they start leaking, then you got to replace that. So the, the, I didn't want to get into that, so I just closed it as much as I could and just ran it to the dishwasher while I was doing the, the – sorry, ran it to the sink while I was working on the dishwasher. Use a pencil to mark the legs of the dishwasher R. And this will help you when, when you when you reinstall. And I'll show you some pictures of that. So this is the <clears throat> air gap in my uh, situation. So the dishwasher drains all the way up to here, and it hops over this little air gap, and then it goes down into the disposal. That's what this is for. I had an uh, earlier problem about a couple of weeks before this where this got clogged and caused the an OE error, uh, an overflow error. This is the view from the bottom, from under the sink. So this was, for me, was really hard to get to. This is where the dishwasher drains into, and it's held on by one of these metal uh, wire clamps. So to unscrew it, I was able to get under there, and you have to use a, a flathead screwdriver to unscrew this metal clamp, and then you can just pull it off this, this tube. But it was hard to, very hard to get to, um, especially putting it back on was harder. You needed two hands, one to hold the clamp and one to tighten it. Uh, and you're in a really awkward position on your back with your hands reaching up, um, kind of leaning on one of the pipes in, in my case. So hopefully yours is not as uh, difficult to get to. This is with the plastic cover off. This is what your water source looks like. It's just a, a metal or a, a, a tube that comes in and it's tied into your dishwasher. This is where your water comes in. This is your power source. Again, turn your power off before you start messing around with this stuff. Um, you, you may not have to disconnect this, or you may have to. Um, this 
cord just plugs into an AC outlet behind the dishwasher. This is what it looks like when it's all taken out. So this, uh, this is some uh, insulation and uh, keeps the noise down. Um, you don't have to mess with any of that, but this is what it looks like. And this is the, the hole that it goes into. There's the, the power outlet. <clears throat> you can see I had some leakage from my uh, water intake was uh, uh, leaking a little bit because it wouldn't close all the way. So I had a little bit of leakage. This is your um, the drain hose for the dishwasher. So they go through this little hole that goes under the sink. So uh, after you've got your dishwasher out, the next thing you need to do is remove the inside parts of the dishwasher. The first thing is to remove by hand the diverter. This just pops off. This is just uh, the, the plastic diverter that sends the water, the jet shoot out, hits the diverter, it pops up into the dishes. So you just pop that out. And um, other sites show that you know if something falls in front of the diverter, that can cause it to be blocked. And that's the simple solution, or the diverter's not on right. That's the simple solution to the 7E code. That unfortunately was not my case. So here's a tip. Um, move by hand the gray part that the diverter connects to, and I'll show you a picture of this in a second. You move it towards the back, away from the door, all the way back. And the reason you're doing this is this will make sure that everything is aligned when you put the new motor in. I believe the default position of the new motor, motor is all the way back from the door. Uh, anyway, this, this worked for me. It uh, may save you a little bit of trouble of things not uh, getting back together properly. So um, you have to remove these inside parts because the part being replaced is held from the inside and the outside. The removal of the middle rack was a big pain. You need a small screwdriver and pliers. It was, it was hard for me to get out. Maybe you won't have the same problem. But uh, you need to remove that rack to get to the inside of the dishwasher. And uh, keep these parts because you're going to need them for the reinstall. It was not that easy to get back in either. So this is one of those things you think would be easy and it's not. And it took a lot of time. It's frustrating and it makes you want to grab that bat or hammer and whack it. <clears throat> there, are, there are two hard plastic squares that you can pop out with a small screwdriver. And the, under, under these are the two screws that you need to remove. And here's some pictures. So this is on the rack, the middle rack. And this little plastic piece holds the rack from moving on the rails. It must be removed on both sides uh, to be able to remove the rack. Uh, it looks simple, but it was frustrating and difficult to get this out. I was trying not to break it as well because it's a little plastic piece that's been stuck in there for you know six years it has moved. But once you get this little plastic piece out, you can remove the rack. Here are the two um, plastic caps that you can pop off with just a small flathead screwdriver. You put your screwdriver in there and pop them up and then it's a, a Phillips screw kind of down in there. It screws all the way down into um, into here to hold uh, you know to hold the, the device in place. If you, you see this, this is what your new part looks like, this part here that I'm highlighting over. <clears throat> just FYI, these are the water jets. So the water shoots out like here and it hits the diverter and the diverter bounces the water up up, up uh, uh, towards your dishes All right, here's a kind of a, a picture of the whole thing um, <clears throat> this little gray um, I don't know what you call it but this little gray box moves back and forth so it'll go like it'll go here and then it'll go here, and then it'll go here, uh, as your dishwasher is running and it's washing the dishes. The My second problem, and I'll go into more detail on this, was this um, piece was moving back here, but it was not detecting that it was back here. And it would just stop. And that's when you heard the da 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 sound. Now it'll try it a couple of times and then it'll, it'll stop. And then your, your dishwasher, in my model year anyways, would not would not run. So this is the thing on this step, you need to push back all the way here. And again, the reason for that is that so your motor will align uh, in the same way because un underneath this metal bar is a tread and that tread is attached to this um, 
uh, this thing, and this is where your diverter is attached to that shoots the water up. Um, and again, it moves back and forth. So the mechanism to move that, you, your motor um, needs to be aligned properly. So move it back here before you take everything apart. So now we access the bottom back of the dishwasher. You gently move the dishwasher on its door. I, I put a towel down to not scratch it. And again, this was just to get easily, more easily accessed. You can, you can do it while it's in its normal position, but it, it's, it's hard to get to these parts when you're way down, you're laying on your stomach trying to get to them. So remove the back bottom panel of the dishwasher. It's easy to do. It's a plastic piece and there's two screws there. When you do this, you'll see three tubes and then one big green behind it. And I've got pictures after this. You have to unhook those three tubes. To do this, you have to unscrew the plastic rings. One tip, and I learned this from another video, is to use a screwdriver-like tool and hammer to tap it in the direction it unscrews. These things are just kind of kind of locked in, and you just need a little tap to un unlock them. Um, or you can use pliers, but be careful with the pliers because you can break the plastic if you if you squeeze too hard. For the big one, you can't use pliers, and it's hard to get off. I used a hammer and a, uh, a small metal, not sharp tool that I showed you in the tool section. Um, tap the tool with the hammer and it knock, knocks, knocks it loose and then it comes right off. Uh, your hand will barely fit in there. So this is a picture of the back, the bottom back of the dishwasher. And the, this plastic piece is what you need to um, take off. <clears throat> These are a picture of the three um, holding plastic, I don't know what you call them, clips that uh, you take off. I, I, um, uh, I did damage one of them and I was uh, fixing it with this uh, screwdriver with some, some uh, Gorilla Glue. Uh, but again, be careful with these to, uh, so you don't damage them. This is a picture of, uh, there's my foot, so you can tell this is the, um, the bottom back of the dishwasher. This, this, and this are the parts that are being replaced with, with your new one. So um, the old one will be popped out and the new one will pop in that place. Back here is the motor that you're going to replace. Uh, these tubes connect to this tube, and this tube is connected to this tube, and this tube is connected to this tube. And these three things are held on by the picture, the, the, uh, these things that I just showed you. So of course you got to put those back on before you uh, hook the hoses back up, <laughs> obviously. So um, <clears throat> this is the one, the big one in the back is kind of hard to get out. So even when you unscrew it, you've got to kind of, kind of uh, work its way out because you've got to get between these these hoses, these two hoses. Uh, one of these is the power, and one of these is the sensor for the uh, for the motor. Uh, these two clips, they're they're both different, so you can't really put them in the the wrong way. Um, so here's an uh, another picture, maybe from a little, little farther back, that shows that this is the drain the drain pipe. Uh, by the way, um, again, you got your three pieces that you're going to replace: your motor and the clip back there. Here's a close-up view of this, and um, this is one of the tubes, and this is the tube it's connected to. The um, uh, the clip is the big round one is back there, and here <clears throat> you put your metal tool there and you tap it with your hammer to get it to rotate just a little bit, and then it'll, it'll come loose when, when, once you do that. So <clears throat> I replaced the motor and the sensor, and this was all one part uh, that I purchased. Some people have just done the motor. Uh, this is the old one, not the new one. It looks it's got some. Uh, some uh, hard water um, marks on it. And um, uh, anyway, this is what it looks like once you take it out. The new one will look much cleaner than this. And this is, you can't really see this, but this is where you want to make sure that the motor is in the start position. Um, that's why you push the, um, the thing back in, the, in some of the previous steps to get that in the right position. Okay, this is what it looks like when everything is taken out. So your new part is going to go right in here. Uh, the big part goes in there and the three tubes go down in there. Um, you had to, this part uh, just unclips from the, um, from the inside of the dishwasher. 
it, uh, that was uh, pr pretty easy to do. Okay, now I'm going to replace the I uh, replace the motor in the sensor. Uh, it is easy, this part is easy to do. It fits right in. Um, make sure the wires are on the inside of the large plastic ring. So when you when you put the new part in, you have to put the large plastic ring back in. And again, it's really hard to get to. And you just kind of make sure that the wires for the sensor and the power are um, not on the outside of the ring. They need to go through the ring. Otherwise, the ring won't um, won't set properly and uh, it'll it'll leak. So make sure that the wire goes inside. Um, put your wires back where they were before. So again, look at pictures. Put the three smaller plastic retainers on the tubes. Connect each of the tubes and lock each in place with the plastic retainers. Um, plug in the wires the same way as they were before. Then um, <clears throat> It's time to put it all back together. You put the back plastic cover on, put the dishwasher back on its feet. Make sure there's no big gaps when you screw the inside parts in. Again, look at your before picture. Um, you do need to make sure that the part closest to the door is in proper position, connected properly, before screwing it back in. I did this, I put everything back together, and the uh, part that's closest to the door, the long metal, um, uh, rack where the holds the that holds the diverter in place was not uh, connected into place, so I had to unscrew everything to get it back in its proper place, and it fits in pretty easily. You just um, lift it forward and then slide it back, and it's locked in place. But you have to do that before screwing it back in. Uh, again, this is kind of what it looks like when it's uh, back together. And this is this is the piece I was just talking about that make sure this is properly connected before you re-screw in these other parts. So um, now you need to reinstall your dishwasher. The reverse of the steps from the install is the simplest way to do it. Um, I had <clears throat> one little tip. I had trouble getting my dishwasher drain clamp back on. It was hard to get to and you need two hands to tighten it. Um, I did mess with it a little bit, um, the clamp. Um, it was kind of a little bit out of shape, so I, I messed with it a little bit. I uh, moved it back and forth and back and forth to make it a little bit um, easier to close tightly. Um, so hopefully you won't, won't have this this trouble. But you essentially put your under your sink, you put the drain hose back in there, and you uh, put the this uh, metal clamp and tighten it on there so it doesn't doesn't leak. When you're putting your dishwasher in, put the feet of the dishwasher in the same spot where you marked with a pencil before you removing. And this will help with a couple of things. It'll help um, making sure the uh, it's far back enough and it's flush with the cabinet. So you're putting it you know, back exactly where it was before. And finally, check that it's level. Uh, if not, you'll get a leakage from this, this dishwasher. And I know that because it happened when this was first installed six years ago, which I did not do the install. The first team that did it uh, messed it up and they didn't level it and it leaked and I you know, called somebody out and they, they fixed it. Um, it's important to level because in my case, the back leg was not on tile and the front two legs were on tile. So it wasn't, the floor was not exactly level. So make sure, um, make sure that your dishwasher is level. Now you're ready to test it out. Um, you, you're, uh, I was certainly hoping that it was gonna work. And for me, unfortunately, it did not. Um, it was, a, but it failed in a different way. So I thought that was pretty odd. Um, the dishwasher now would not even start. It would run its pre-check to make sure that the water wall could move back and forth, but that would fail. And you could hear a and then that would eventually stop. So uh, there, there was a, another video that had suggested that this is an issue with the um, the machine not being able to find its home base, which makes makes a lot of sense. And their solution was to uh, tape a magnet to the diverter. And there's a good <clears throat> location you can put that in there. So I did happen to have a little magnet around and tried that out, and that was not successful for me. Um, not saying it won't be successful for you, but um, it didn't work for me. So I was pretty sure that it was not detecting this home base for some reason. Um, it could have been the control board, it could be the new sensor, or it could be the magnet. So I wasn't really sure, so I went with the cheapest and quickest one to try first. So I bought some powerful $10 magnets uh, from Amazon. And those were, you can see the picture of those um, 
where I showed things that are purchased. So <clears throat> in the under the, the diverter, there is a magnet there. And you can feel this as you put the new magnet on. So there is a magnet, and, and that magnet is how the system detects it's all the way at the back, and it knows to reverse direction and go forwards. So for some reason, uh, my new sensor wasn't detecting my old magnet. I don't really know why. So with this new magnet, it's uh, real thin and round and powerful. I just stuck it under the old magnet, and the two magnets uh, held themselves together, essentially. So I run the load seven, I guess we just ran it tonight, so eight times now, and it has stayed in place. So I am keeping an eye on that to make sure that it stays in place, but the, the new magnet is, is very powerful. Here's a picture of it. Uh, this is the one I bought. You, you, know, you can get something like that, or maybe one a little bit thinner, because this barely fits um, when the, the gray plastic thing with the existing magnet goes all the way back. It barely fits under there, but it does fit. So you either want this is this is the widest size you could get for it to work. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, there are, there is one I think that was a little bit narrower um, that uh, uh, you could you could get as well. But this one is working, and it stayed in place. You know for you know eight full successful washes. Here's a picture of the uh, this is the the diverter. Um, this, this red thing is all the way back. Here's the gray plastic thing, and here's the magnet right there. And that is just st stuck by magnetism to the bottom of this gray thing. And it go and this gray thing goes this way, and it brings the diverter because the diverter's connected to it all all the way back as well. So there, there's a video of the of the inside of a water wall dishwasher running out there on on YouTube as well. And that's pretty handy. You can kind of see how how it works. Um, so you may want to watch that. But this magnet causes the sensor to detect that this is at the back of the dishwasher and it's time to move it forward. So um, I tested it again and it ran great without the dishes. Um, then I put some dishes in and it failed. And then I was really ready to break out the baseball bat. <laughs> I was like, all this work, and it's still not freaking working. But uh, wouldn't you know it, there, were, there was a handle from a strainer being washed that was in the bottom rack, and it was sticking out, blocking the diverter. So I removed that, and voila, it, it worked. So I certainly wish my original issue was that issue, but hey, maybe if you're having this issue, it's you have a, you know, something, one of your dirty dishes just blocking the diverter and causing this. That would be a, a simple solution. Um, like I said, I've now run it seven times, and it's it's working well. Um, I am keeping an eye on the magnet position, but it, it is a very strong magnet. It seems to stay in place over e each washing. So uh, when you get them, be careful and don't get your fingers between them because these magnets are, are they are really strong. So um, uh, and it says a warning on the on the magnet uh, box. So why did this magnet work? For some reason, the new sensor was not detecting the old magnet. I don't really know why. Uh, maybe some incompatibility based on the version of the dishwasher. I know mine is six years old. Maybe this part was for some newer ones or an older one. I, I don't really know. Um, the old magnet could have been damaged in some way. Um, about three weeks before this, I had a, an overflow error on my uh, Samsung dishwasher, and that was due to the air gap uh, being blocked, and I fixed that. But that did cause some water to stand in the dishwasher for a while, I don't know, maybe that had something to do with the magnet going bad, maybe not. Um, in the end, I, I, I don't really know, but replacing the part with the magnets, um, probably replacing the part with the magnets, if, if, if I went to you know Samsung or wherever and bought that part and bought a new one, that would have might have worked. Or I could have just replaced the motor and used the old sensor, and that might have worked. But I won't really know because I'm not going to go mess around with it anymore since it's working. And um, this is me. I'm knocking on wood right now, so hopefully that will be the uh, end of my dishwasher repair career. Um, anyways, that's uh, that's all I have. So good luck with your dishwasher, and I hope uh, this was of some help to you. And um, hope you get to hear the lovely song. I'll I'll wind up on the lovely song one more time, and this is what you're working for.
All right, guys. Have a nice day.